Now we have our senior class speakers, Mark and Neff. All right, so hot, but Hi. that was more important. <laughs> so, so, should we start? Go ahead. Hi, Mark. Neff. Okay. Why did this fat, rich Chinese boy come to Midland? <laughs> Were his parents trying to punish him? that he just rob a bank and need a place to hide in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> because this place does not fit him at all. Most of you guys probably thought this before. Nope, the first reason I come to Midland is because the case school denied me. My English skills were too high for them. I had an outstanding TOEFL score of 44 points of 120 points. For reference, most of Chinese students here got over 90 points. Basically, during the interview, I used past tense, future tense, and present tense in one sentence. <laughs> so Midland adopted me anyway, so thank you, Amy Graham. <laughs> the second reason I came to America for high school is that I wanted to escape from the high-pressure Chinese education. Although I did escape from the hell of Chinese education, I managed to come to another completely different kind of hell. <laughs> Although my parents thought Midland is a heaven, right, Dad? See, he's right there. Uh, because when we toured the school and he first saw the sign that said, Welcome Mark Gone and his family, he chose to believe this is the best school in the world. So, with thousands of complaints and millions of tears, I say goodbye to my phone. No, phones. <laughs> right, Phil? <laughs> and I came to Midland. When I was in middle school, Nevada education sucked, and still does. It was ranked at the bottom of the list for high school graduation rates and was ranked 51st out of 51 in chances to succeed. I was a short dyslexic who opted to stay home from school any day I could. I didn't turn in many of my assignments, mostly because I didn't feel like it. Yet my grades were still considerably above average, which isn't saying much because at the time, the average grades for an eighth grade student was a C minus. My only C immediately went back up to a B when my English teacher heard I had gotten into boarding school. She knew that in order to get out of Gardnerville, Nevada, my grades had to stay pretty. I did plenty of extracurriculars and I read avidly. Last but not least, and this is the kicker, math was my best subject. <laughs> I was in ninth grade math in eighth grade and I had the second highest standardized test score in the class. I remember asking Phil before the night hike my freshman year, we would be learning trigonometry because it was one of my favorite subjects. Oh, how people change. <laughs> so why did I leave this little haven of good grades and amazing math abilities? Honestly, I was bored. My fifth grade teacher taught me there was more than just textbook education, and I wanted out of the public school system of bullies and teachers who had lost hope. So I googled West Coast code boarding schools without uniforms. I, I, <laughs> I found Midland, applied with enormous help from my mother, and prayed to every god that I knew of I would get in. This awe school brought us so many surprises, though. If I had met Naf outside of Midland, all that would happen would be some weird eye contact as we pass on the street. <laughs> Midland is magic. It puts many types of students together, and it forces us to be friends. <laughs> that is the beauty of Midland. It forced Mark, who would otherwise have no connection to me at all, to be my friend. And even through the, through the horrible things Mark has done to me, like stealing my gluten-free cookies, sacrificing me to the snakes, to the rattlesnakes, and just now pouring water down my dress, um, <laughs> it has been a pretty awesome friendship. One of Mark and I's biggest differences is our financial status. This has led to a game I enjoy quite a bit. Let's see how many years of my tuition Mark's outfit will play. pay. <laughs> we usually play this game using crappy British accents. Hey, Arbaco, how are you doing today? Lovely, lovely, dear. Don't you just love embarrassing yourself in front of hundreds of people? Yes, I'm freaking nervous right now. Oh, I think I just peed a little. Oh, no, your $900 pants. That's enough. 
Not only was I forced to be friends with Mark by being in this small community, I was forced to be friends with literally everybody. Because if you're not friends with someone, things get really awkward when you're eventually forced to do some activity with them. This is actually really cool because I would never, not even once, talk to Tate if we went to public school together. And yet, here we are probably best friends. <coughs> I, <laughs> I actually never ha would have never imagined I would become friends with most of the people in my class. Derby and I will probably be briefly married in the future as our lives just keep... <laughs> As our lives just keep randomly lining up that way. Whenever I find a meme that is utter cringe, I know I can send it to Skyfresh and he'll appreciate it. I'm pretty sure I've accidentally dated and been engaged to Matias several times. And even after college, I know I will see Sage again as Minnesota is my destiny. These little things, inside jokes, and odd personality traits have allowed us all to stay friends through these years. I actually, I actually never planned it to be friends with any of you guys before. I just want to be aloof and cool. <laughs> At the beginning of junior year, I tried not to talk to any new students. I tried to be cool. As you can ask many Chinese students, they thought I'm Korean for <laughs> the first two weeks. But after one week of acting invisible, I failed. I started to talk to people and make friends. It's impossible for me not to make friends at Midland because it's such a small community. I would watch these interesting people every day and become harder and harder not to be friends with them. I love using British, British accents with this woman's name next to me. I love twerking in Linda's office with Matthias, Lana, Aeon, and Annalise, right? I love to go to Reds with my son, Sayer. You know, like that. Where I always fall asleep and get sunburned. I love getting therapy from Adam about my love life until midnight and telling him I will never get in crush on anyone again. I love having a quick party after 10 o'clock too with my friend, once my senior. People in Midland here are pretty interesting. Very interesting. So outside of my Midland family is my legitimate family. Mom, I have no words that will express my thanks to you and what you have done for me, but I will try. These people sitting around you, my Midland friends, probably know all of your darkest secrets. <laughs> And their only comment is, oh my god, I love your mom. <laughs> now I bet you're wondering, oh geez, what have you told them this time? I told them all these horrible things, like for how for 18 years, you've given everything that you possibly could to, Tem to me and Temujin to give us the amazing lives we have. I'm so happy you finally found Karen, because um, to have somebody to lean on when things get hard is something you've been without for so long. And even better than that, she makes you happy. You're the reason I'm up here now, and that is one of the great, greatest gifts you've ever given me. In my memory, my dad is the toughest person in the world. No matter how big a problem he faced, he will never give up. This is pretty awkward. I never said this to him before. But... <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling again. <laughs> I never see my dad cry until the day he dropped, off me, uh, dropped me off at Midland. That day, he saw, I saw him secretly crying. My dad has given me everything I want, and he never forced me to do anything I didn't want to do, except once he told me, no matter what, you're going to Midland. <laughs> I know this decision is really hard for him, but he believed that Midland can, would change me into a better person. After my parents sent me to Midland, my credit card became my only family member around me. <laughs> Using the credit card was the only way I would talk to my family. The amount I spent represents how much I miss them. <laughs> so mom, as you can see, I miss you so much on freshman year. <laughs> My dad and I used to fight a lot, and somehow every fight turned into the fight about Midland. I would say, dad, you destroyed me by sending me to Midland. But Midland didn't destroy me, dad was right. I hate to say this, but I think Midland actually made me become a better person. So today I want to say thank you to my mom and dad that decision you guys made four years ago and nursed so much from this top environment. And surprisingly, I liked it here. Lord. I never went through that. I was never upset at my mom for sending me here because she didn't send me here. I chose to come here and I have never once regretted the decision. I love Midland and have, truly never wanted, and have never truly wanted to leave this place. This does not mean it has not been hard. 
Adjusting to the academics was more than difficult, and I even failed a class sophomore year. But it's okay, because I got to spend an extra year torturing Phil. <laughs> I also had to get accustomed to a new family. I am more than used to, getting cha to change and getting moved around. But I was always with my mom and brother. Here, it was just me. It's a bit strange having the most important people in your world living 10 hours away. This is how I felt, a bit strange. I never felt homesick, and I never felt happy to be away from them. I always just felt a bit strange. And this is for all you parents in the crowd. If your child does not call you as much as you'd like, it is not because they hate you or don't love you. It is because on the night they planned to call, their friends were having an epic dance party, and they knew you would understand. <laughs> or the morning they were going to call, all the phones were being used by people trying, talking to their bays who don't go to Midland. <laughs> and when you do get a call from an 805 number, there's always the chance it's Janet to tell you your kid's in the hospital again. <laughs> or maybe that's just you, Mom. Either way, your kid loves you dearly, but Midland is a distracting place. They will get around to it. An email or two helps, though. The next part I'm going to tell you might be a little bit depressing, not like that funny. But I want to share these experiences because after I experienced all this depression, I finally realized I'm grow up. The first moment I arrived at Midland, I knew this four year wouldn't be easy for me. I was trying to give my most positive side to people and show them my life is full of happiness. But nobody would know I will quietly cry alone in my room many nights and try not to let other people hear me. Quick question, have you ever watching the person who you love be with somebody else and you still have to act as nothing is wrong? And I have to tell you, that feels like death. <laughs> Probably no one will believe that kind of talk is coming from Mark Gohm. Yes, even Mark Gohm struggles. <laughs> but every time my class gather up together after 10 o'clock and celebrate each other's birthday to make inappropriate jokes and trash talk about our school lives or sing as loud as possible in our room, I will feel better. All these little moments supported me and make me laugh through all the hard times. So all my friends at Midland, I want to say thank you because of you guys brought hope into my life again. Also the person who brought tears, struggles, and pain into my life, I, was thank I want to say thank you too. Because of you, I became stronger and I learned that I cannot get anything I asked for. This is high school. All the high school students have loved, suffered, cried, laughed, lost, struggled, and complained about their weird four years. But especially in Midland, this kind of small mu community, Many people are like me, questioning themselves, what's the meaning of life? Now I can tell you the meaning of life is be yourself, achieve your dreams, never let yourself down or let other people put you down. Always stay strong and be proud because it's the most important thing in your whole life. Along the same lines as to for your seniors, we will give you some extra tips for life. Bring your calculator to Phil's class. <laughs> Don't take the gluten-free food. They have so little in life. <laughs> Be nice to Yazzie and Gloria, because they are the two nicest person at Midland, and they will feed you well. Go to the bathroom before your job starts. It's not a difficult thing to do. <laughs> like me, nerf from the mistakes you make. I drove off campus at midnight and have over 80 laps per year. But I can still be senior class president and represent my clock and offer a speech to you today. Everybody make mistakes. Everybody has those days. But this most important thing is to nerf from the mistakes. A crush is a stupid, horrible thing that changes your whole brain chemistry and makes you fall head over heels for some stupid random person. I can tell you this, not only because I spent the entire semester researching the topic and writing 10 pages on it, but because I too have had a crush on somebody, many people actually. My advice to you, tell your crush your feelings. Now I know this is not always easy, because I've never once done it. <laughs> <laughs> I also sat across from my crush almost every night this year and didn't say a thing, and I 100% regret it. If there is a moment where you're like, I should just tell them right now, then do it. Because I had those feelings almost every day and I ignored it because I thought my feelings would get hurt. But in the end, my feelings were hurt anyways, so just do it. <laughs> love is beautiful. Go pursue love. But don't let love take your brain away because love will lead you to do so many stupid things. <laughs> And do, you'll regret it. As I'm sure you're all getting antsy to get packed into your air-conditioned cars, we will end the speech with a quote from the song chorus sing at Pear Alumni Weekend. So long, farewell, I've 
Vida, say goodbye. I'm glad to go. I cannot tell a lie. Goodbye.